Good morning. Welcome to Plant Lab Live. We're here in a tasteful place in the main garden. My name is Dustin Miller. I'm Director of Experience and Innovation. And today's Plant Lab Live is all about succulent plants. Um, they've definitely grown in popularity in the last few years. So I've got a little variety here. We'll talk about some specific plants and we'll talk about ways that you can, can propagate or make new plants from the ones that you have at home. Uh, so once again, my name is Dustin Miller. I'm Director of Experience and Innovation. We're here in a tasteful place in the main garden and welcome to Plant Lab Live. So today's all about succulent plants. I promised that we would talk about the perfect soil and then ways that you can reproduce succulent plants in your house. So let's start with soil first. Chances are you've either received a succulent plant as a gift, you've bought one in the greenhouse, took it home, and it looked great for a couple months, and then it died. Well, there's a couple reasons why. One, they definitely need drainage. Um, so if you're getting them in a small glass jar, there's lots of cute little arrangements that people are making. Um, they're just not gonna live very long. Succulents need really good drain soil. So I'm gonna show you my recommendation. Uh, there are a lot of experts out there that have their own recipe, but for me, I do three parts. So just a regular potting soil. You can see here, I've got this one here. Nice, loose potting soil. Any potting soil you have is gonna work. So you need one third of this potting soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that into a container here. Second part of my recipe is vermiculite. So this is actually a super lightweight component in the soil. You can see how it just kind of floats down to my hand. And vermiculite's available in any of those big box stores. Um, this one is gonna make sure that there's a lot of air space in your soil and it also keeps those pots really lightweight. So if you're tired of lugging around pots or they just get really compacted down and heavy, vermiculite is a great option. So I'm gonna pour some of that into my mix. And if you have questions as we go along, feel free to type them out and I'll catch as many as I can now, but we'll have time for Q&A towards the end. Uh, the third thing that I put into mine is perlite. Again, this is another mineral, um, super lightweight. This one is what you see in those potting soil mixes that you buy. So if I come back to my first one and you see these little white specks, it's perlite. But I love to put a ton of it into mine. So a third part perlite. So what I've done is put potting soil, vermiculite, and perlite in three equal parts in my soil. This is the mix I always use. Um, when you get it, it's pretty lightweight. So I usually put either some gravel or something on the top once it's all planted up to keep that soil in place. Otherwise it's gonna blow away when you first get it. Um, but again, succulent soil, easy recipe for me. One part potting soil, one part vermiculite, one part perlite. Now there's some other options. A lot of people really like pumice. So it's that volcanic stone. It's very porous as well, lightweight. This one does a really good job. It's not as easy to find, and it's also a bit more expensive. Um, so I actually have gotten this from Austin. Couldn't find it locally, but if you have pumice, it's a nice lightweight option to give those, those succulent roots um, nice light soil to grow in. It's not gonna get waterlogged. Some other options, you could include sand um, or even gravel that, that gives it some drainage but you want some organic matter, so make sure whatever your mix is, you've got a little bit of soil, and that's gonna give their roots some food to, uh, to hold on to. So that's my tried and true soil mix. Now let's take a look at some succulents. I'm sure most of you have received a cute little planting that started with some nice little succulent like this sedum here. Eventually, it's falling over the pot. Looks a little leggy, not super attractive, well, believe it or not, you can actually turn this into perfect new plants. Um, succulents are one of the easiest plants to regrow at home. So all you have to do is take your plant and just pop off the leaves. You can either use a sharp little knife or on some of them like this sedum, they literally just fall right off. So take a cutting of something that you just don't like the look of anymore and you're gonna pop all those little pieces right off. 
like this. So you can imagine, if you've got a whole plant like this, pretty soon you've got dozens of these little leaves. Now, if you've tried this at home before and you failed, here's probably why. As soon as you pop this off, you don't wanna plant it. Um, basically, this is a, an open wound on the plant where you've, where you've twisted it off. So what you wanna do is just lay it aside for a couple days. Um, in the shade, it's perfectly fine inside and let it get a little callus over the end of the plant. So basically, you're gonna let it heal. It's like if you put a Band-Aid on a wound, let it heal for a couple days, and then it's gonna be ready to plant. And when you look at it up close, you're not gonna to see too much of a difference on the leaf. It'll just brown a little bit. Um, but once it looks like this, that means that it's gonna be ready to plant. And it's as simple as laying it in the soil. So I'm gonna take that mix that I just made, and what you're gonna do is take the leaf and just barely tuck it into the soil. Now in terms of containers, you can do this in a terracotta pot, any of the little greenhouse plastic containers, um, a Tupperware from the kitchen, or even just a large open tray, whatever you can find. Um, they just need a little bit of soil to be able to, to find something to root into. And here's another, another quick tip. Once you lay it into the soil, you're gonna water it one time once you water it that first time, don't water it again until you're seeing roots growing on the plants. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can show you up close what this looks like. So you can see I've got some baby little roots right here and also little leaves that are already starting to grow. I'll see if I can focus in on this for you. Uh, once you're seeing this root action or these, these baby leaves, that means they've taken root, they're ready to grow and so then you can start a regular watering routine. For me, in Texas, during the growing season outside, I water succulents just as much as any other plant. I do grow in terracotta, which dries out pretty quickly. If you're growing in plastic, just kind of reach your finger down in, and if you reach in a couple inches and it's bone dry, it's ready to water again. So depending on the time of year, that could be once a week, all the way up to every couple days. Um, so it's just kind of checking that soil. If it's dry, it's ready to be watered. Going back to the container that's planted in, you want to make sure that you've got drainage holes underneath. So if you've bought this beautiful plant and it's in a glass terrarium or it's in a cute little coffee mug, long term you're going to have healthier plants if you get them into something with some drainage. So your options are you could drain, you could cut a hole if you really love that container, but I definitely recommend finding something with drainage and that's gonna let the roots really grow nice and strong and deep in the pot and you're gonna have a healthier plant. So as they continue growing, you'll get these little babies and eventually you may get a plant that grows off the leaf. So you can see one here actually popped up from underneath, made its own baby plant. And you can see on this one, if I turn it sideways, this actually started as a leaf cutting that then grew into a baby plant. So just from these individual leaves, you're gonna get a ton of adult plants. So that's one way that you can reproduce succulents by just twisting off that leaf, letting it scab over for a couple days, lay it in soil, and then water it once you've seen that the roots start growing. Now, a lot of times you're gonna get a plant like this. This is an Echeveria. It looks very similar to these sedums, but if you reach in and try to twist off that leaf and it just doesn't come off quite as easy, um, you know it's not a sedum, it's an Echeveria. But that doesn't mean that you can't do cuttings on this one. You're just gonna need a nice knife. Um, and I went ahead and pre-cut this one earlier. So you can see a pretty big open wound on this one. Again, just like a Band-Aid, let it heal for a couple days before you put it in the soil but you can reproduce an Echeveria the same exact way, give them a couple days and lay them in the soil. So that's one way to reproduce. A lot of plants are gonna give you other options. This one is uh, known by a lot of funny common names like the lifesaver plant or the zebra plant. Um, this one is in the genus Wernia, H-U-E-R-N-A. And this one actually you can just break little pieces off. So if I get up close here, you can see these are all little segments. And on this one, you just twist it off. Usually it finds its own way to the ground. And all these little segments 
can be broken off and planted. So same thing, give it a couple days, let that wound heal, lay it right on the soil and it's gonna root out. So I've got a sample here. I started this one probably about two weeks ago. I'm gonna get it nice and close here. Those are all little roots that have started growing on this cutting. And that's really just after two weeks. So this one I had laying down in the soil like this um, and it's ready to grow and it's gonna give you a lot of awesome growth. This plant is super prolific. Here at the garden, we started with just a small tray and over the last three or four years, we literally have made thousands of adult plants from this. Uh, we use it for our education programs. We use it in plantings throughout the garden. So this one is Wernia zebrina or the lifesaver plant. I can show you, I've got one little bloom just starting here. When it opens up, it's just a really beautiful bloom. So if you look up lifesaver plant, you're gonna see what this one looks like. And again, on this one, you just break that segment off, let it heal, put it in the soil, and it's gonna grow perfectly. Now I've got one more to show you here, and I'm sure you may recognize this one. Anyone know what kind of plant this is? This one comes in lots of different colors and sizes. And this time of year, we get these beautiful blooms, mostly red, sometimes yellow blooms, depending on the plant. Any ideas on this one? This is one that's also included in your sunscreen, not this specific species, but one that we like to put on after the sun, helps us cool down, great in beverages. So this is a species of aloe. All right, so the aloe plant, you can see the way that it reproduces is it, it shoots out little baby pups or plants all along the main plant. So on this one, don't worry or think that you're gonna hurt the plant if you break some root pieces. So let's take a look at this, sorry for that pause there. This thing has a ton of roots, but you can also see there's lots of little baby plants that are popping off. So just get in there. As long as you have some roots connected to the plant you separate, it's gonna grow. So you can see I've got one, two, three, pretty good sized plant here, four, five, and this one is all one big plant here, six aloes in one pot. On this one, because you're not cutting the leaf off and this plant is already independently growing, all you've got to do is pop it right into a pot with your soil mix and it's going to grow for you. So again, another easy way to propagate or reproduce your aloes, uh, just by pulling apart those little baby plants. And it also makes them happy because when they're all stuck together in this big mass, they're all competing for the same nutrients. Separate them out and they're gonna grow up pretty quickly for you. Now, the one piece that I haven't talked about is you can absolutely grow succulents from seed. So if you take a look at this aloe here, uh, we're still in the blooming phase. If a pollinator for an aloe like this, lots of tiny little insects. If a pollinator gets this and it produces seed, it's gonna look like a little bean pod. Let that pod completely dry out and you can plant the seed. Uh, what I like to do is take one of those takeout containers like you would get a rotisserie chicken in, put, put that layer of soil, moisten the soil, lay the seed, and put the lid on top. Keep it pretty moist. This is surprising because I just told you succulents like to dry out, but for the seeds, you're gonna let that let that really work like a terrarium and you're gonna see a constant kind of um, precipitation from the lid down onto the plant. And once you see them start to grow in the soil, and that can take a couple weeks, um, then you can, you can start to open that lid and, and water it like you would normally as it dries out. Uh, it just takes a really long time. Some succulents are gonna grow faster for you than others um, from seed, but you can definitely try from seed. My recommendation though, um, from all those different ways I showed you today, it's so much easier just to take cuttings or separate the plant. So just a quick review for those of you that hopped on later in the call. My ideal succulent mix is three equal parts. Potting soil, vermiculite, and this is available in those big box stores or your local nursery, and perlite. So three equal parts of those. It's gonna give you a nice lightweight, breathable, mix that your succulents are gonna love. And then three ways that you can make more succulents from the ones you have. Break off those pieces, just like this. Give them a couple days to heal. 
lay them in your soil, water once, and then let the roots do, do their thing. Once you start seeing roots, you can water normally. You can separate pieces off of a plant like this Wernia. Again, give it a couple days, same thing. If you need to take a cutting, you can do that. Let it heal. Or the last one, these plants are gonna just grow little babies, pull those pups off, plant them up separately, and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna open it up here. If we've got any questions, any follow-up on these, or you just have general succulent questions, give you a few minutes. And if not, I wanna take you out to a tasteful place and show you one special thing that we have growing still um, that's loaded with succulents and it looks pretty awesome right now. So I'm gonna grab my phone, we're gonna head out and feel free to ask any questions here in the comments as we head that way. And we're gonna walk out into a tasteful place. Flip the camera around here so you can see what's going on. I have to tell you, I'm a little bit distracted this morning because our horticulture team has been mowing down the mint and it just has the most amazing fragrance in the air. So if you weren't able to join us this spring, we had a beautiful exhibit of, of instrument topiaries made with succulents. And this is one of the ones that we still have here in the garden. Uh, it was sponsored by Dave Perry Miller but it's a beautiful harp just loaded with succulent plants. So I'm gonna get up close here and show you kind of all these plants in action. We've got some sedum that's flowering, both in yellow and in this beautiful pink color. We've got some hens and chicks, Semper vivum. We've got some more echeverias, some beautiful ones here up at the top. Um, but it's a really cool plant you want to give them time to grow in um, know that you're going to lose some but you could definitely do your own topiaries at home uh, you can pretty much get them to grow on anything as long as they have some soil to hang on to so this is our beautiful harp that we had for sounds of spring during dallas blooms and we've left it here in the garden because it looks so gorgeous and once again my name is dustin miller you've been here at plant lab live today we're in a tasteful place in the main garden. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to this every week. And thank you for being a supporter of the Dallas Arboretum. During this time, we are so thankful for your support. And we'll see you again next week, 10 a.m., Plant Lab Live. Dustin Miller, see you later.